I really do not get non-believers, how they call any well-educated people dumbed, stupid, uneducated, when their degree comes from television, Facebook and TikTok and so on, let's talk about, Dr. Gerald F. Dirks received his Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, from Harvard College in 1971, his Master of Divinity from Harvard Divinity School in 1974, his Master of Arts, Clinical Child Psychology, from the University of Denver in 1976, and his Doctor of Psychology degree in Clinical Psychology from the University of Denver in 1978. In 1969, he obtained his license to preach from the United Methodist Church, and he was ordained into the Christian ministry, deaconate, by the United Methodist Church in 1972. He converted to Islam in 1993 and completed his sessions program certificate in Islamic studies from Imam Muhammad ibn Saad Islamic University in 1998. Dr. Dirks is the author or co-author of over 60 published articles in the behavioral sciences, primarily in psychosomatic medicine, over 140 published articles on the Arabian horse and its history, and over 220 published articles and formal presentations on Islam, comparative religion, and private Islamic education in America. He has lectured widely on Islam at American colleges and universities. Let us watch this video and do not forget to subscribe to the Islamic Prince channel. I uh, there was some negative reaction from um, within the community in which I live, as well as from some non-Muslim friends, uh, and also from some uh, business associates. Uh, but very much positive response from uh, my Muslim friends. Yeah. Did anything change in your business? Did anyone know? Uh, the first year after I became a Muslim, uh, I lost probably about 50% of my income. So I'm assuming, and I didn't understand why, because it took one, one son, but uh, he was already an adult at this time. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Well, he, he was on the verge of saying Shahada. He, he's married, by the way. And um, he was about on the verge of it. And this is an example of how Dawah should never be done. Um, he was uh, at our house. Some Muslim friends were at our house. And the one brother, recognizing that my son was very close to saying Shahada, uh, said, well, you know, just go ahead and say Shahada and then you can divorce your wife and we'll get you a good Muslim wife. Well, my son's wife heard it. And that was the end of that. No, not good at all. But we, we sometimes fail to realize how powerful our words can affect people. After you became a Muslim, did you view change once? Well, as I said before, I, I was spending over half of my social time with Muslims to begin with. And uh, the Muslims that I knew at that point were all wonderful examples of Islam. So that certainly didn't change afterwards. I continued to have contact with them, etc. But I did then come into contact with the wider Ummah and, and discovered that not all Muslims were such shining examples of Islam as were the, my initial friends. Um, you know, in Islam, um, all things are beautiful. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I would point to three things. One, um, on an intellectual basis, uh, I, I was impressed with uh, the strict monotheism that is found in the Quran and Islam. And uh, quite frankly, coming from my background, uh, seminary background, um, there were things in the Quran that, quite frankly, no illiterate seventh century Arab could possibly have known. Uh, and that was jarring uh, to realize that fact. Um, but also, uh, Islam's message of love and Islam's message of brotherhood were, were on a more emotional level, 
uh, strongly motivating forces. Um, what is your opinion about this type of these well, first of all, let me hedge my bets in answering that question because I wonder whether there is an Islamic world, really. Uh, if we define an Islamic world as uh, a world or a community or an ummah in, in which everyone is, is practicing Islam, I'm not sure that exists, quite frankly. Um, as far as uh, the so-called Muslim countries of the world, uh, I've had the opportunity of living in Jordan for over a year, and, and it was a wonderful experience um, and many, many uh, valuable things, I think, exist there. Uh, the way in which families care for each other, um, the extended family concept that is there, the fact that in, in my 14 months living in Jordan, I never saw a nursing home, you know, families cared for their elderly. Uh, those are beautiful things. Um, on the flip side, um, every strength is a weakness in some ways. And the focus on extended families, etc., uh, creates what social psychologists call a collectivist culture. And in a collectivist culture, very often it's more who you know than what you know. And everything becomes based upon sort of tribal and family alliances as opposed to actual skill and merit. In contrast with, say, the Western world, uh, which is an individualist culture, and everything's based on what you know, not who you know. In the Uma, I'm going to speak about the Uma in America primarily. And I think the major problem that we face as an Uma in America is one that we as an Uma create. And that is the failure to differentiate between culture and Islam. So we had many Muslims from all over the world living here. And they each bring their home culture with them, along with their Islam. And to a great extent, I think, fail to differentiate what is their home culture and what is Islam. And the problem this creates is, is not a problem for themselves necessarily, or for converts like you and me. But the problem it creates is for the second generation of Muslims in America. Because the children of these immigrants are born and raised in America. And if you ask them, what's your nationality? They'll tell you they're Americans. You know, doesn't matter where their parents are from. They're Americans. And if we do not differentiate home culture from Islam, we can very easily end up creating a situation where the youth feel that they have to choose between being an American and being a Muslim. And if they feel that's the option given to them, quite frankly, we're not gonna like the answer they give. So I think this is the major problem. Failure to separate home culture from the religion of Islam. Obvious, obviously the solution is we do need to make that differentiation.